This is Lene Rule, and today I'm here with Laura, the 2017 Travel Nurse Source Scholarship winner. Laura, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself, like what your major is and how you picked it? Okay, so this is um, actually my second degree. My first degree was in biology, and I kind of got out of school, and I was kind of being pulled in like, different ways by family and by friends and everyone's like, what are you going to do? You have this degree in biology. I didn't know if I wanted to be a doctor, a PA, a dentist. I just was kind of really confused. And so um, I ended up starting to have like some health issues and I was surrounded by nurses all the time. And um, they were just really, really, really an important group of people in my healthcare experience, always there for me, um, always answering questions thoroughly, checking on me. And I just realized that I wanted to give that type of care to somebody and be that person that not only advocates for um, a patient, but also who, you know, just cares about them and is just there for them. Maybe they don't have family or maybe they're lonely or something. And you can just kind of help that person through a really difficult time in their life because nobody likes to have health problems. So I decided that I was going to apply to a clinical nurse leader program at the University of Maryland. And it's a two-year program for people who um, already have a degree in something else. So um, it's really amazing because there's people in my cohort who are from all different backgrounds. Um, And so I really like that about the program. And I just started on Tuesday, so I am already overwhelmed. But, um, yeah, it's a CNL program, clinical nurse leader program. So it's a master's program, um, and it's an entry-level nursing program. So it's really great, um, and it kind of prepares you, I guess, to do further um, critical thinking than you would necessarily, like, in just a, a BSN program or a community college nursing program. So it, it has that added element of critical thinking and planning and implementing because clinical nurse leaders are people who go around the hospital and they kind of look at, you know, maybe an entire unit or an entire floor of a hospital and they're kind of looking for cracks in what um, that area is implementing currently. So. You're a crack filler, I guess, essentially, like you kind of go around and you say, oh, this isn't working, so we need to do this evidence-based practice to improve our patient outcomes, our patient safety, and that type of thing. So I like that added element of the program, and that's what really intrigued me um, to start that program. Yeah, that's really exciting because it sounds like you'll have a better opportunity to shape what's really going on in hospitals and, you know, just the type of care that patients are being provided. Definitely. And it's a little bit more, um, I guess you have a little more autonomy too. Um, And a lot of times clinical nurse leaders, they like sit um, with hospital boards and they're really, it's not just like at the, you know, micro level, but it's also like I guess at like a higher level, macro level too, because you'll talk to like a hospital administrator and you sit down like every ever so often and kind of go over all the things that are happening in the hospital. And there may be, you know, a few different CNLs that see, you know, a resounding theme in that hospital. And there's also like um, boards and stuff that they go to that are for like East Coast or West Coast, things like that, where people share, you know, their research about what's been going on um, and what things they can improve. So I do like that part of it. It's definitely very um, an interesting experience that you maybe wouldn't get as a BSN. I don't know. I just, from what I've heard, you know, an added bonus, I guess. Yeah, that's awesome. And is there like a floor or a specialty that you feel like more drawn to once you get out into the field? Yeah. So I think that I really want to work, um, in ICU or in trauma, I definitely want to do something where it's on your feet and you have to think. I consider myself a lifelong learner. I really like learning. I really like kind of being in the middle of things and I'm not afraid. Um, I've never been a person who's afraid of taking a chance or afraid of being wrong or afraid of questioning something. And so I think that that environment, 
you know, will give me the opportunity to, I guess, feed that part of my personality that um, kind of needs more going on. I know that now, nowadays in nursing, I think wherever you are, you have a lot going on because there's a shortage in nursing. Right. And even if you're like on a med surge floor, you have, sometimes you're overwhelmed with patients, but that's the kind of thing I guess as a clinical nurse leader you look at too, because if somebody is on this floor and they have seven or eight patients, how can you provide quality care with no errors, you know? So, um, but I don't really see myself being in something um, intense like ICU, trauma. And the school that I go to, University of Maryland, um, they have the Trauma One Center across the street where it's literally across the street from my school. And, um, you know, they have people flown in from all over um, to the University of Maryland System Hospital. And it's there's a lot going on. So they have all different types of unit, traumatic brain injury, just, I mean, any type of traumatic injury you can think of, they have a unit for it there. So I'm definitely excited to get um, some clinical experiences over there during my time in school and hopefully my foot in the door because I think that's what I would be best at. Yeah, that's extremely convenient for you. Is there anything about um, going into nursing that makes you nervous? I mean, you're talking about trauma, ICU, and and really influencing the decisions that happen in those units. So is there something that you find intimidating about that? Yeah. Um, so I'll start. It's kind, that's kind of a two-part um, answer because right now I'm already really nervous just because – I. so I've been working in dentistry for – the past 13 years in the same office, the same people. And um, I, I'm an orthodontic assistant now. And okay. I, so that's a very hands on career as well. Um, basically, anything the doctor does, um, you can do and you do do. So I'm coming from this place of not knowing at all because I'm not a dentist, but I know a great deal. And my boss, he, you know, ca- calls me over hey, look at this patient. Do you think I should move this tooth this way? What do you think is the best way? He definitely values my opinion. And I definitely, if he's, you know, really busy, I can look at the charts and I can tell the other girls what to do. And I am like, you know, the, the manager, I guess, there for um, the other assistants. So leaving that and going to something that is very different. Yes, it's still in healthcare, but it's not dentistry. It's not braces. Right. Um, that in itself is like very scary. And already this week, I'm like, oh, I'm like starting from the bottom again. <laughs> like it's, you know, you have to work your way up to have that knowledge base um, where you can provide really good care to somebody. And I guess that brings me to my other part. It's just like um, it is it is scary, especially working in the environment um, that I want to be in. Because you have somebody's life in your hands. I mean, that's already been a resounding theme for my first week of school is that you as a nurse are the last line of defense for your patient. So it's not on the doctor if the medication is wrong. It's not on a pharmacist. It's on you. You're the person who administers that to them. So not only just medications, but other things, like a lot of times you're the person who's inserting a catheter or you're the person who's carrying out directions from someone senior to you, whether it be a nurse practitioner or a doctor, a PA, whomever, you are the last line of defense. And that's a really, um, I guess, like precarious situation to be in. Like, I mean, that's, it's it's kind of scary. So um, I, I think, yeah, I mean, I definitely plan on studying as hard as I can. And I plan on definitely learning as much as possible and not being afraid to, to ask questions. Um, that in itself is scary, too, because you don't want to look like you don't know what's going on. But it's, it's, it's an important thing to do. So um, it is nerve wracking to start something new and to realize that once you, once you're there, you are the person who's kind of like, no, you're not the doctor, but you're running things in your own right. So, um, and you're having to advocate for somebody and ask the right questions. Like if that person is in the ICU or in trauma, that person's going to be, you know, a lot of times unconscious. So you are the person who is the line of communication for that family and that individual to people who are higher up. And that is a a scary place to be in because you have to, you know, look at so many different factors. What is that person's culture? What is, 
you know, <laughs> who are they? Where do they come from? What's their age? What are their family's impressions about this situation? So it's, it's a difficult course to navigate for sure um, when you are going to be dealing in those types of critical care um, situations. But yeah. And how do you think your experience in receiving care will help you as you pursue this career in nursing? Because you definitely have had plenty of experience, you know, from a patient standpoint. Yeah, so um, I think that for sure it, it gives you a different perspective because, um, and I want to answer this question carefully because I've had, I think that when you're, when you're a nurse in general, you have your set of things that you have to accomplish. And sometimes it's a lot, like the tasks that you're given and the things that you have to keep track of for multiple patients, it can be a lot. So sometimes we forget that, you know, this isn't like a floating entity. This is like a human being. And having that level of compassion is sometimes pushed by the wayside. Um, even in my experience, it has been, and I don't think it's necessarily because the person, the nurse wasn't compassionate or loving or caring. It was because they were burdened and by a lot of things. And so I think that being a patient, I know, um, you know, how that individual feels lying there. They're scared. They're worried. They don't know what to expect, all of those things. But then in addition to that, you have the nurse's standpoint where they're very, you know, having to think about everything critically and having to balance different patients and different situations and different needs. And so by putting those two perspectives together, I think that it will allow me to really advocate for my patients well, and it will allow me to just have that compassion because I think that if I ever got really frustrated or, you know, overburdened by something, I would be able to remember, you know, think about when you were there, think about how you would feel. And we are human beings. So it is, you know, it's sometimes your emotions get the best of you, but having that, um, you know, that, that level of, I guess, compassion is important. And I feel like being a patient myself, I've seen things that, you know, Maybe I wouldn't do it like that, you know. Um, I've never been a nurse, though, so it's hard to speak. But I definitely have seen things that, you know, I've been like, I don't think I'd do it like that. Um, So (laughs) I think that from a patient standpoint, I mean, you definitely feel, um, you can feel like um, not only your own emotions about what you're going through, but also I'm like a sensitive to other people. So I know that sometimes I've felt the emotions of my nurses too, albeit good or bad. Um, So I think just that heightened level of I've been a patient before and I have to get the same type of respect and the same type of compassion that I would have wanted and maybe not received or that I would want myself because I still could, you know, at any moment go into issues with my condition. Yeah, most definitely. And I think, you know, once you get into the weeds, it'll be important to to remember that and keep that in the forefront of your mind. Mm-hmm. Um, so sure. uh, now that you're in school, um, you have you applied for this scholarship. I'm assuming you probably applied for a lot of scholarships, but I you, did. <laughs> you received two thousand dollars from us after writing a very well written and compelling essay about your experience Um you know, with your own personal uh, health issues and then how you came to decide to be a nurse. Um, How did you learn about our scholarship? I actually um, was just kind of like researching. I can't even like pinpoint it to anything particular, but I know it was definitely like a web search. Um, I can't remember if it was like from Johnson & Johnson because I know that they have a lot of resources or like if I saw it pop up. But I definitely was doing a web search. Um, it and yeah, it was a web sh- search for sure. And I don't think okay. that I put in anything like particular. Um, just kind of like nursing scholarships, and then I would go through and see like, do I meet this criteria? Oh no, or do I meet this criteria? Yeah, that kind of thing. So it was like I had like a really intense. I'm still doing it now, to be honest. Oh, I'm it's sure. Like, 
there's so much there's so many um opportunities out there and you never know I mean I'm so grateful for her winning this scholarship and I just would like to say that for anybody who is you know um going into any type of health care um nursing especially obviously but there are those scholarships out there and if you look for them and if you try and apply and you don't you may not get anything but you may be on the other end and you may get a lot of money so it's just about advocating for yourself and being proactive in you know financing your education because the scholarships are out there um, but you have to you know look for them yeah, absolutely. This is our first year um, doing this scholarship, so we did really try to get it um, everywhere that we possibly could, and we're excited to continue doing it in the future. Um, so we're really grateful that it led us to you, and uh, hopefully we'll be... I am be... too. Thank you. Yes, no, I'm you're really, welcome. really, really grateful. Really grateful. Well, we're excited to see um, what you accomplish in the coming years, so you'll definitely have to keep in touch with us. <laughs> I know, I know. I want to keep in touch with you guys, and we'll see. Like at the end of this, I may have no interest in ICU. I know that sounds right. crazy, but it's like <laughs> people have been telling me that. That's been like a theme. So you get a mentor when you first start um, at school, and my mentor is like, she's about to graduate, and she's like, oh, like you know, I thought I wanted to do this, but you know, now like no, I'm in this this area, and it was something that she thought she would never do. Um, prior to starting school and having the experience. So I'm open to, to new things, but I'm pretty sure that's what I want to do. But we'll see. I'll have to let you guys know. <laughs> yes, yes, we will. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to say um, about healthcare, nursing, and the scholarship in general? Well, I just want to say that I'm really appreciative um, to you guys for, you know, giving the scholarship. Nursing is such a great career, and I think that I mean, I don't, I don't know, but I have people, you know, close to me who are nurses, friends, um, like friends slash family. <laughs> um, and so there's just so many different um, facets to nursing and so many different areas that you can go into in nursing. I believe that it's a really, really um, wonderful career where you can get a lot back. And so I'm really grateful to you guys for recognizing that and for offering your scholarship um i know that it's going to help me a lot and i'm just i mean i'm just beyond like words grateful it really it's really help it's going to really help me so i'm really appreciative well you're I welcome really <laughs> thank you <laughs> we are very happy um to be able to do this for you and we wish you the best of luck in thank all you of your so future much. plans Thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you. I will definitely let you guys know, and I'd love to keep in touch. I'm, I'm very grateful. Thank you so much. No, you're welcome. I, we look forward to uh, talking to you again soon, and thanks for taking time to share with us today. Thank you.